<clears throat> Yo, peace and love world. Jam Master J here. You know, I was thinking, sitting in the house, just been enjoying where I've been, and just all the things I've been doing. And um, I'm coming up on 10 years of ever putting out my first album in 2026. And leading up to that point, I want to put out some more music. I want to keep touching the world. So I'm going to drop an album, top of the year, called Universal Josh. I am you, you are me. That's truly the way of the future. And that's what we're about to start doing. You're going to follow me as I record songs. This is going to be a dope journey. And I wanted y'all to come on with me. So we're about to get started. The purpose of the Universal Josh album is to really, really, really give a shot of encouragement and a shot of self-love and a shot of power and empowerment to the listener. Um, I think we really need to start to learn that the power truly is in the people, all people. Uh, black people, white people, brown people, yellow people, all people of the world, the power is truly is, is in us together. But um, we have to know that and we have to move accordingly. I think uh, for so long we've been walking divided and that is a ploy that the establishment or the government or the powers use to keep us separated, to keep us hating each other, to keep us divided. And when they know that, that is something that they can use so easily to distract us and break us apart that they can use it without fail every time. And my purpose of this album is to show people that that's all a lie. These are all ploys to purposely keep us apart. And if we could erase those ideals and principles, we could create a new world where we really were together, where we really did live together and in peace and in harmony, and even in our differences, still in peace and harmony. One thing that has uh, prevailed over my lifetime, my father's lifetime and his father's lifetime is hatred, separation, racism, just being some type of prejudice, you know? And I think that today we could all change that. And that's really the message that I want this album to, to give out is that we have the power, all of us together, but the only way we can activate it is if we truly do it together. Lately, my music, my life, my message, everything has just been more about perseverance and positive thinking towards yourself firstly, and then toward everyone else. I think it is extremely important that we look at ourselves in a higher light than the way that we have. We've been taught to not look at ourselves in the best way. Uh, we don't look as good as everybody on TV or the phone. We're not as talented as everybody on the TV or the phone. We can't do what the people on the TV or on the phone are doing or have done when it's all a lie. We are beautiful, we are talented, we are smart, we are just as good as the people we see on TV and the phone. There's so many things that come into play with becoming a local artist and becoming a big star on the world stage that I think that a lot of people will never understand. And uh, those people are the ones that kind of make it a challenge to, to be an artist because it's like, you don't understand, this isn't about selling a million records. This isn't about having people fall in love with you or wanna adore you. This is about getting out of feeling getting out of vision, getting out an idea. And whatever happens from that happens. But first and foremost, it's about how I feel, what I'm thinking that I put down. And that's what it has to remain about. And the purpose of the documentary is to just show people that you can do it yourself, man. Stop waiting for people. Stop waiting for people to Say like, yo, you got it, man. It's you, it's your turn. Here, nobody's gonna do that. 
Nobody's going to give you that shot that you're daydreaming and fairy tailing about. You have to create it yourself. You have to stop sitting around and thinking that somebody's going to come and save you when you have to create the shit yourself. You have to make your own blueprint. You have to create your own network, your own record label, your own journalist company, your own broadcasting company. These are the times we're in and you have to do it. You have to stop waiting for people to do it. And I want to kill the laziness. I want to kill the fear and I want to kill the doubt inside each and every person and show them that they too have the power to do whatever they want, whatever they want. But you have to believe it. We live in an age where you don't need to get signed to a record label. You don't need fucking Kevin Lyles or Julie Greenwald or somebody like Lee or Cohen to tell you, hey man, you special man. Come here man, I wanna take you up under my arm and control you but make you feel like you're free. We don't need that anymore. We don't need to get jerked on our publishing or our intellectual property or the rights to our music. We don't need to do that anymore. So we need to stop willingly giving ourselves and giving our, our, our gifts and all of that stuff to those people thinking that that's what we need so bad because you don't. If I never get interviewed by Fader or Rolling Stone or Complex or if I never get a chance to meet Ebro or if I never get a chance to do drink champs and and do all of these things I don't care because I'm still me and I'm still great and how would I look if I go back again changing my mind <clears throat> I think I could help you but you go through I do this mantra where I say greatness lives in me, great things are coming to me, but I just recently started adding, I am great no matter who knows it, no matter if the world ever sees it, no matter if people scream when I come outside, no matter if people are hounding me for autographs or pictures or blowing up my social media, I'm still great regardless. And that's what we all have to know. Fuck these, these ideas of when you see me and when I'm on this platform, now I'm great. You're great right in your living room. You're great sitting right in your car. You're great sitting right where you are, building your thing from the ground up because that's what it takes. And all these uh, platforms and things that we glorify, they had to start from nowhere too. And that's what we all have to do. I am a father, an artist, a musician, creative director, I'm a friend to some. I am just me. And I'm proud of that. And uh, I'm super grateful for this journey that I've been on for these 36 years. It's definitely been so enriching. And I've learned so much. And I'm truly grateful for every experience that I have. Everything that I've learned and everything that I'm constantly learning. Like I'm never not learning. I'm always just wanting to be the best that I that I that I can be. Rational. One more time. Ah. I can't forgive you, rational. When I just knew you'd be around. Rational. I was fortunate as a child to be born into an amazing family um my father david stokes my mother bobette stokes my sister i was just so fortunate and was always just exposed to greatness i've never not known what it was like to be great from the minute i came out of my mother i was experiencing greatness from how my parents lived to my family and how great and talented and smart and beautiful and creative they all were. My family was also directly connected to church. Uh, my uncle was is a pastor and to kind of just go right online with my story, I was exposed to music at such a young age. I was exposed to the arts at such a young age. I was exposed to uh, speaking at such a young age and, and taking all of that in 
it really helped me to get to this place today because I really see all the tools that can take you to the top and really where you can continue to grow and be the best that you can. Um, I saw all those tools and they were always around me. I'm so grateful that I was exposed to that. You know, I could have just been another little black child in Baltimore in poverty or with no hope or with no self-love, no self-esteem. And I'm so grateful to my family that I had self-esteem, I had self-love, I had a sense of worth, I had confidence. I knew what I could do, I knew what I could bring to the table. Um, so I'm just so thankful for them. Um, and as much as at one point as I resented, and I can actually say hated church because of all the other crap that comes with it, I really at, at this point in time appreciate the church because I was able to hone my craft. By the time I became nine years old, my father started his own church and I was the full-time drummer for him. So playing at my uncle's church from like two to like nine, you know, seeing the choir, seeing the plays, seeing this, seeing that. By the time I became nine and came to my father's church, I was ready to play every week. I was ready to get on the floor. I was ready to be active and just go hard at it. And uh, again, just glad that these opportunities were here for me, you know. Um, I'm a nine-year-old child. All I want to do is play the drums, and my father has a church where I can play drums. So I was really fortunate to be able to have that, and I really took took super advantage of that, you know, from 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 everything, you know, um, and not just as a drummer, but just as a musician, you know, realizing other parts of the music and other dynamics in the music that doesn't have to do with drums, you know, that really helped me excel as a musician. Um, my father's church, uh, Maranatha Apostolic Temple, which is now Maranatha Truth Center, um, it helped me so much. It was like a tribe. You know that the term, it takes a village to raise a child. I'm so thankful for my parents. My parents are not the only people that raised me. There were so many people around me that left great impressions on me. Who I was like, man, I wanna be like that. I wanna do that. And you know, I think that's dope. And it, it builds you up as a person to continue to be the best you can be. You know, where your parents start you off, you have that curiosity and you're seeking knowledge and you find it in little pockets. These people might not even be musicians, they're entrepreneurs or whatever, whatever, but you learn certain aspects from them to continue to grow as a whole thing. So uh, that place was so amazing for me. In 2006, my mother passed away from kidney failure. And uh, my mother was also the choir director of the church. So when she passed, I took on that responsibility. I took on that and I, and I was such an unfortunate time, but I gladly took it on because I knew that I was ready. And uh, I took all of that unfortunate turn of events all of the, uh, the sadness, the anger, um, the passion, the desire to be great. And I took all of that and I just continued to grow. And I started teaching the choir. And I started teaching the praise team. And I was in charge of the band. And all of these things started happening where I, was, I could feel myself growing as a person, you know, um, watching other people. There was a guy named Joseph Wiley who was a choir director at my uncle's church and I watched him direct choir rehearsal. And it just amazed me, man, and it just blew me away. And I was like, yo, whenever I get the chance to do that, I'm doing that. And when my mother passed, I just took that opportunity to just go super hard at it and I never looked back. All up, you know, through and before that time, I played for local groups in the city. So, you know, you're starting to rub elbows and meet the lo other local musicians and the other little child prodigies. You know, I truly believe I was a child prodigy. You know, I was playing the drums at two years old. And the amazing thing is, there's so many of us around here. Just in Baltimore, you know, little boys playing the drums at two, playing piano at seven, eight, masterfully, 
You know what I mean? Like Baltimore breeds talent and not just here, but you know, we have friends in DC and friends in Philly and friends all over the world. The more and more you grow and, and touch the world and you'd be like, oh man, it's a lot of these little niggas that was like me. So you feel like a part of a fraternity, a part of a class where you're appreciated, you know? And it's like, wow, we out here, we're growing and we're doing it and we never quit, you know? Because it's the difference between being a little cute child and you can play the drums and, oh, you're so cute. But when you turn 12, nigga, you better really be able to play them drums because it ain't gonna be cute no more. You know, that cuteness grows out really quick. And we have to realize that and, and shout out to all the musicians and artists and everything that continue to grow and just had the passion and desire to want to be better. I salute you. Uh, my sight isn't Baltimore, it's the world. Growing up in Baltimore was, it was great. You know, um, being who I was, I always tried to live like a double life and, and act like I didn't go to church or act like I, like my father wasn't a pastor and stuff like that. But um, it could never work, you know, somebody would call my house and my father would answer the phone, praise the Lord, and I would just give it up. I'd be like, damn. But uh, school, school was great for social reasons. You know, I always, I was never a big fan of school. I hated school, to be honest. Um, school was never my thing, even when I was going to like, Guilford Elementary in third grade, I was like, man, I hate this place. School was never the place for me. And I also encourage all listeners to learn your way. It might not be through school. And the older we get, we realize school is just another institution, like jail, you know, that's teaching you what they want you to know and, and teaching you what they want you to learn. And I don't wanna learn that history. I don't wanna learn all those lies that you've covered up and told me about. I don't want to learn about slavery anymore and how I came over here as a slave and my grandfather was a slave. I'm sick of that shit, man, because I wasn't a slave, you know? And even as slaves, we were kings. Even as slaves, as slaves, we were gods. You know, like when the, when the, when the religion was real and we could really heal and we could really change things. You know, I was never a slave. I was never a servant. You know, I'm a free man. And that's another thing that I want to let you feel and let you know from me. Be free. Don't let a person change you. Don't let a person shrink you. Be you at all times. If they don't like it, fuck them. And they'll get over it. But it's about you at this point. Growing, being your best, never changing. Just because somebody said, yo, I don't like that. So what you don't like that? I don't care if you don't like that. I like it. And that's what we have to learn. You know, growing up in the city, you do learn a lot about peer pressure and things of that nature where, you know, oh man, you doing that? Oh, why are you doing that? And then you find yourself slowly changing. But those days are over, man. We can't, we can't fall victim to other people's words. What do they know? Nobody can tell you how to live your life. You have to find out from the inside. I want people to always feel what I'm doing. Challenges of recording this album were just when I could do it, when I didn't have the R around me. Um, the R is my son, but, or even if I did have him, I'd just be like, hey man, you know, Here's the tablet, watch this for a while until I'm done recording. You know, you can't let things get in your way. If you really have a goal, if you have something you want to accomplish, you can't let things stop you, man. Whether it's babies, whether it's girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, whether it's whatever you might be, some, something in your mind you might be creating just to stop yourself. We have to alleviate all those things. There is no obstacle big enough that can stop me. You know, I have my son with me when I'm supposed to be recording an album. Okay, sit right there. I'm gonna be right here. You can see me. And this is just what we're doing. And you know, that is a lesson to him. Even that too, to be like, my father is pursuing something. He's serious about something. And believe it or not, that is being passed down to him right now. You know, um, we have to teach our children early 
We have to teach them about passion. We have to teach them about loving themselves and staying creative and staying curious and just wanting to find out more about themselves. That's what it's about. You know, not do your science homework. It's about, yo, be the best you can be in knowing your child, their strengths and weaknesses, and guiding them toward where you know they want to be. Hell yeah! Um, any other challenges of recording the album? Um, I've recorded albums in vans. Um, and I know I'm not the only one. Shout out to all the artists that make it happen no matter what. Thinking of words and things like that. But lately, even with that, I don't force words. You know? I'm on my Paul McCartney shit right now, man. Like, whatever comes out, that's what comes out. Um, my guy from the the Beach Boys, you know, Brian Wilson, whatever word at that time fits, that's what I'm saying, you know, that's just what it is, because the profoundness is from the message, it's not from seven syllable words, and it's from the message, it's from me singing, it's from the music, you feel me, and that's what it's about, so all listeners and everything, um, other recording artists don't beat yourself up so much about you know the words gotta just be so uh, because you have to be so uh, in, in order for anybody else to even think those words will be that so know that you are that start to write it and put it out even uh sometimes when i record i won't write i'll just be on some future shit and mm -hmm. sit there like all right what's up <laughs> And here come a word, and I put that line in there, and another line will come, and maybe I'll write one to save it. So it's just about what works for you. And uh, just knocking down those walls and thinking that everything has to be this way, this way, this way, your way. Do things your way, and it will always work. You know, remain confident and just continue to grow. You know, at one point I felt like I had to write everything, every line, every line, every line. You know, but now I've been enjoying just sitting there, letting the music kind of hit me. What am I feeling? Okay, here comes some inspiration. Man, that's a word. Just write it, you know. We got to take the pressure off of ourselves to thinking that we have to be so perfect to impress somebody. Impress who? Your art is dope because it's you, because you just made it. The nose don't have to be perfect. It's you. Be you and be proud of what you created. And that's what it's about. Fellow artists and listeners, I would like to tell you that you are amazing. You are special. You are one of a kind. There's nobody like you. No one has your brain. No one has your ideas. Remain confident in who you are. Don't waver or don't bend because what it seems like you're doing isn't working on Instagram or people aren't patting you on the back or telling you how dope you are forget those things we have to wash those things from our mind looking for validation from people you know to pat you in your butt to be like yo that's the nigga right there nah tell yourself i'm the nigga i'm the guy i'm god i'm amazing whether you tell me or not i know who i am i don't need your approval i don't need your validation i am me you know and that's one thing that i really want everybody to know you know especially all of my youngsters in school middle school high school those impressionable years don't 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 let what's what's popular right now what's happening right now dictate your life we we, we live life it used to be on an every four to five year time now i really be, to believe it's like a every one to three year because the world is just moving so much rapidly so you cannot put your whole stake in something that's going to change in nine months or something that's going to change in two years when you're only 14 or 16 or 18. Don't allow now to cloud your judgment for your future. Continue to look further. Continue to write those ideas down. Continue to plan for the future. Plan ahead. 
you got a project you want to start working for going in, into next year, start working on it now. You got something you want to do going into 2025, start working on it now. Don't wait. Don't be lazy. Have true passion. A lot of people are out here just talking. A lot of people are out here just making videos for Instagram to get some type of, again, validation from the world. But it's about what do you want? You have to be on your Kobe shit where it's like, I don't care what anybody says about me. Oh, I'm weird. Oh, you don't like me. Oh, I'm this. Oh, you think I'm that? So what? This is me. And this is my journey. And this is what I'm going to do to stay focused, to be great. I'm not lollygagging with y'all. That doesn't lead to anything. You know, when you first get into this little uh, arts and entertainment industry, you think that you have to be at all the parties, talking to everybody, hugging everybody, laughing at everybody's jokes. But you don't. Be you. Stay you. Keep your rhythm. People will respect that. Hold on to your, your, your treasure, to your, to your special power, that thing that makes you you. Don't let people look at you and, and look, make you familiar. You know, like tap into your craft. Tap into your craft. Tap into what you're serious about. And in everything you do, I'm you. You are me. Stay focused. Now, it's a great pleasure to present to you on the great... Everything wrong when it just rise. Let me do how you do it, just keep it tight. Time to take this motherfucker to a new heart.